Hi, this is Tino with Bluesy News. We're at Ventura County Blues Festival, and I've had the opportunity to meet Deanna Bogart, who played earlier today, born in Motown. Do you really appreciate the fact that you were born in Motown? I think it's cool as, as can be. You know, I think it's great. I love that that um, that I was born in Detroit, and I can say that. And I didn't spend as much time there growing up, but I think I think being born there helped. Something, what do you think? Something's in the air there, yeah, musically. I think so, anyway. Talk about your growing up. You you were you're kind of like a troubadour. You toured the world as a musician, but you were prepared at a young age for that, right? You know, I'm, I'm a I was a divorce brat, so I was pretty much the, the not hot new girl in almost every year of school in, in different states. So I I kind of tell them that you know they sort of bred me to be a, a road musician. And uh, next week you go to the BMAs. You're nominated again this year for a horn instrumentalist. And they haven't banned. There was like three or four years in a row you just swept the BMAs, and they haven't banned you yet. No, they haven't. Surprisingly, surprise. I'd ban me. Uh, it makes me wonder. You know, maybe I should rethink this whole piano thing. But uh, it, it was wonderful because, you know, when I wanted to play the horn when I was 11 years old, I was told that girls don't play the saxophone, and and I knew they were wrong. But I, you know, didn't really have anything to come back with of, of any, uh, you know, strength of why that doesn't make sense. And uh, it took about 15 years to to realize that. Wait a minute. I'm I don't need permission, and I went out and bought my first horn when I was 25, 26 years old. So, as a multi-instrumentalist, it's very important to me that both my instruments can stand on their own. Otherwise, it's it's a shtick, you know? Right. And I have too much respect for the players, the music, and the, and, and the instruments. So, winning those awards for horn... Um, it felt really good, and it made me work even harder. Nice. And, uh, Proved everybody and, wrong. And still, and it makes me even need to work harder now, you know, to validate that for myself. So sure. that was a nice, it was a nice thing to have happen, and boy, did it uh, make the 11-year-old girl in here feel feel good. Nice. You know? Now, you don't come from a family of musicians, per se, no. at least your mom and dad, your immediate no. family. What inspired you to pick up piano at a young age? You know, some of us have said when we're talking with other musicians, you don't really know whether whether you chose music or music chose you. It both got me in and out of trouble in all of my new schools. I could always sing harmony with anything. Um, it, it balanced me when things were really, really tough. That's why I went to Deanna Land and everything was was safe there. Right. Nothing else mattered. Right. And and uh, particularly navigating the, the tougher spots, and there were some tough spots. So, uh, you know, I think everybody gets something that they just intuitively understand. Right. And if you happen to to be drawn to it as well, and you like it, and you work at it, it can really be something significantly wonderful for, for you, and, and perhaps move other people as well. So it's sort of my therapy. Nice. No, no, music is very therapeutic, both for the listener and for the creator. Why blues? Who did you see in blues that you say, I gotta be him or her? Who, who was the... I don't, you know, this this might might be edited out because I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm genre free. It's it's music it is music. There's only so many notes, and there's somebody in every area, genre, whatever you want to call it, music that that moves me with what they bring of themselves to that. So I don't really think that I've done the homework, and I can speak a lot about. Uh, a lot of different areas of what happened in, 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 from the 1800s the 1900s right. the, the rent parties Kansas City the Pendergast era in the 1930s and 40s and what that went to where and 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 I love that and I particularly love Boogie Woogie oh and, nice and, yeah and I play a lot of the Boogie Woogie festivals right. and, and and I've done a lot of homework because I wanted to know everything and then and then you let it go all in there and then you close your eyes and you do it as you However, early on, I remember my mom playing her 8-tracks, right. and, and I'd hear Bill Haley and the Comets, okay. and then I'd hear Muddy Waters, and then and then she'd put on Pete Seeger, and then she'd put on Ella Fitzgerald. Oh, Ella. And, yeah. and I, I, I guess I realized early on, or Mozart, or Glenn Gould, or somebody, that if it makes you go out, it's the blues. And, and as a philosophy that moved me in a way that some other people weren't or I enjoyed it musically and I got a lot from it but to, to move me so I started going down that road of, of Jay McShann and Count Basie and, and, and Dinah Washington and Ben Webster and Lester Young and, and on and up and, and Otis Spann and, and different people of any instrument whatever they whatever they 
their artery is, you know, for, for that. And it just all kind of turned into sort of a blusionistic thing for me. Wow. So when I'm feeling the, the classical come in or the country or the this or that, it for me it all it all grows out of the blues. It just right. doesn't always end there. Sure. But with my upbringing and, and who I am and my childhood... That, I'm, some the, of, I'm the blues at heart. Some of the pain of that translated into your and blues. that's and, and so the so the blues esque world sort of opened the door for me to be able to go like that from that source, and I think that's why it's been so emotionally balancing wow. uh, for me. What Very are, cool. Yeah, know? no. And I've gotten to meet and play with a, you know with a lot of these people and sure. sit down with with Taj Mahal or, or Kemp Mower or you know yeah. Ruth Brown or Johnny Copeland, just some amazing people and and. And, you know, the, the one thing about the blues is it's an art form. Art always finds a way. And the thing about the blues is at its best, it's one person's individual journey of their life. Right, And right. to me, that's the best of the blues. And you can and you should, and it's real. And real really is all we got. But not everybody can play the blues. You can't fake that. Right. You, can't. you can fake chops. You can fake great things. You can right. learn great things. But impressing people and moving people aren't, ex you know, mutually exclusive necessarily, although they can be. Right. But I would rather, I'd rather go to the place that sues me and maybe move somebody else. That's the only shot you have. But at least you're giving a part of you for yourself. And, and sometimes that translates and somebody comes up and says, I got that or that line you wrote or you just did something that, that caught me and... and that's that's my currency. Yeah. Doesn't get much better than that. Yeah, you know? yeah. You've had an illustrious career. You've been rewarded for it most recently. Does that mean I'm old and I haven't no, gone away? No, not at all. What? No, it's nice to see the reward. You know, the the outcome of, of all that hard work that you put in. You were a long time Blind Pig Records is your label. My first record was on Blind Pig in '91. Okay. And then in uh, 2003 or four, I think we decided to do a record together. And then when I decided to do Piano Land, which which was very frightening for me and I wanted to do for a long time, they wanted it. So I went back with them for Piano Land, and then they also put out Just a Wish Away, my most recent one, which I did in New Orleans and in the Bayou, and, and quite a departure for uh, everyone. But whatever the whatever the thread is, it's, it's strong, and, and I felt really... Uh, it meant a lot to me that they wanted that record as well. Nice. So they seem to be like the home label for you, but yeah, they sort of they sort of get me, or if they don't, they they're still with me. Well, they got always got their eye on they're you. They're awesome, Jerry um, and Edward. They're, they are. They've been great to me for a long time. This DVD, yes. it's done on. This is a for Vista, I guess, another company. Right. Uh, right. Can you a talk private a bit company. About that? Um, a friend had started Vista Records and, and DVDs, and. Uh, and that's where the DVD came from. And, you know, now that it's happened and there's years between, between, I'm glad it's there. At the time, it was I was really uncomfortable. I didn't know what to do and how to act and with the camera following you around. Right. But when I, you know, and I should have just relaxed into it and not thought about it, but I wasn't quite to that age yet, I guess. Sure. The nice thing about it is it truly is gathering nuggets of, of all things gig on on stage, off the stage, on the road, off the road, and and uh, and the documentary parts of it and the discussion parts of it actually to me are, are more telling of what life is really like on the road when you're not uh, when you're somewhere in the middle versus you know uh, the folks that are you know flying right. with many buses and this all that or just right. flying. And, and you're somewhere between the van people and the bus people, right. which is me. But it's very, uh, it, it, it shows kind of the truth of it, you sure. know? And, and, and it's, being a road musician is really difficult and challenging and, and, and it can be heartbreaking and, and really difficult and and so utterly worth it, I can't tell you, if if you're compelled to to be that. And, and and have that be your currency of the places you go and the experiences you have with other people and the amazing things that happen that never would have happened otherwise. Right, right. Well, no, all those investments you made have definitely paid off. 
Interesting currency, though. It's a different currency. You got to yes. sort of wrap your brain around that. Sure. And make sure you can still take care of business. Sure. And and, uh, and, and now raise you're raise children and do everything. Right. Else, and I was you know? surprised that when you told me your daughter's age, I won't mention her age, but I was really fifty-two. Real... No. Uh, she just turned twenty-one. Wow. The best thing I've ever been. Best production I've ever been part of in my awesome. life. Awesome. I hear a lot like of parents say line. that, yes. And now you're a transplant to California and the most beautiful part of our state, which you're almost down in Palm Springs and between Idlewild. I love and, it. And Palm Desert. And Palm Desert. Yeah. My dad's there and he was kind of alone. And my uh, most of my sisters and, and nieces, nephews, everybody's in Arizona where I was raised partly. Um and uh, and I and family in LA and I you know I traveled a lot and we saw each other but it's not the same when right. you don't have the day to day or or you know that kind of consistency so a little over a year ago I waited till it was right time and, and apparently it was 35 years to wait wow. and I relocated a little over a year and a half ago and it was very scary I changed kind of changed my whole life music was the only constant and. Um, it, it was very scary and and uh, probably the best gift I've given myself in a long time. Nice. Well, you're up next week for uh, another award, and um, I'm hoping I'll be thinking uh, positive thoughts for you. Uh, thanks for taking the time to sit down and thanks. talk with us today. And uh, This is Tina with Bluesy News. We're at Ventura County Blues uh, Festival, and I'm here with Deanna Bogart.